As of June 2021, New Zealand is the world's fourth richest country. According to Credit Suisse, despite having a population of only about 5 million people, this tiny country is causing major waves among the world's wealthy. Let's take a look at how it feels to be a billionaire in New Zealand. New Zealand Billionaires In New Zealand, wealth inequality is lower than in other countries. It has 214,000 people in the top 1% of world wealth, with 97 million in the top 10% at one time. Many Silicon Valley billionaires, including Google co-founder Larry Page, whom became an official Kiwi in November 2020, have found a safe haven in New Zealand. Applicants must invest $10 million in New Zealand over a three-year period to qualify for the country's investor plus resident visa. Larry is worth $127 billion. Peter Thiel This idea was initiated by PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel, who stated that if society collapsed, New Zealand would be the best place to end up. That's also not a joke. By 2022, Peter will have a net worth of around $3.7 billion. With a stable governmental structure and a changing environment, the country is self-sufficient in food and energy. While the specifics of how Larry plans to spend his money in New Zealand are unknown, Larry is expected to settle in Auckland. The ultra-wealthy desires scenery and security, and New Zealand can provide both. Homes in the area for this wealthy class can cost upwards of $7 million. Peter Thiel has a five-bedroom property in Queenstown Hill, which is estimated to be worth more than $4 million. Graham Hart Graham Hart, who built a packaging empire through buyouts, is the richest New Zealander born and raised. His stock portfolio isn't particularly impressive. Aluminum foil, milk cartons, water bottles, and paper are just a few of the items he's invested in. Graham, who has a $31 million mansion, is certainly living the high life. His mansion is perched atop a cliff with views of Half Moon Bay and the Haya Oraki Golf Course. There is an indoor and outdoor pool, as well as a guest house and a tennis court at the mansion. He isn't entirely based in New Zealand, however. In New York's West Chelsea District, he purchased a $34 million penthouse in 2019. There were almost 5,700 square feet of indoor area and 322 feet of patio space in the five-bedroom home. At least two of them, Barty and a Global Express, as well as seven private planes, are owned by Graham. He also owns a yacht called Ulysses, which is 160 meters long and has 15 guest cabins and 24 crew cabins, according to reports. New Zealand Wealthy Inheritors Along with these individual billionaires, New Zealand is home to wealthy clans of families who are building their fortunes on the work of their forefathers. Todd Corporation in New Zealand is owned by the Todd family. The family is also interested in petroleum extraction and refinement, as well as automobile assembly. They have a net worth of $2.7 billion, which isn't bad. The Malbays, with a net worth of $1.9 billion. This next family has certainly come from modest origins. The Malbays were not born into luxury and grew up in poverty. Their father worked as an engineer and their mother worked as a teacher, Nick, Matt, and Anna. Three siblings received a $20,000 loan, which they turned into a family wealth. Since they were 12 years old, they'd wanted to start a toy company. The business creates entertaining and inventive toys at a low cost. The company now operates in more than 120 countries and generates yearly revenues of roughly $400 million. Richard Chandler Richard Chandler is still a Kiwi, despite the fact that he no longer leaves in New Zealand. In 2006, he relocated to Singapore where he leads the Claremont Group, a personal investing firm. Richard is estimated to have a net worth of $2.3 billion. In 1986, he and his brother Christopher sold their parents' business, and in 2006, they founded Sovereign Global, an investment firm. The Claremont Group is linked to the Sovereign and has a sizable investment portfolio in healthcare, technology, and financial services. Home by Medical Corporation, Vietnam's largest private healthcare conglomerate is also owned by the company, Peter Cooper. Peter Cooper, like Richard Chandler, has left New Zealand. He now resides in California, where he amassed the most of his fortune. His estimated net worth is between two and three billion dollars. He made his money from investments, much like the other billionaires in this film. Cooper and company, his firm, was responsible for the construction of Britomart, a shopping center in Auckland, New Zealand. In the Bay of Islands, his business also built a luxurious holiday spot. Finally, Peter's firm relocated to Texas and built South Lake Town Square. Did you know that when Barack Obama was in New Zealand, he stayed at the landing? 
When it happened, Peter undoubtedly felt successful. He was also a founding member of the brewing behemoth Lie on Nathan, and while he may have left New Zealand financially secure, he is returning as a billionaire. Sir Michael Sir Michael Friedlander has been a billionaire for nearly 50 years, but unlike some of the other billionaires on our list, he is committed to giving back to his country. In 2016, Sir Michael's net worth was estimated to be $1.4 billion. As a thank you for his contributions, he was named Knight Companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit. Sir Michael made a lot of money from Ponsonby and Grey Lynn, as well as Roma Cornell, Mount Eden, and One Hunga. He was a practicing lawyer for 40 years and a partner at Keegan Alexander, so it's no wonder that he amassed so much riches. And unlike some of the other billionaires on this list, he's putting his money into making New Zealand a better place, which is admirable. Mitchell and star ratings are hard to come by, and Australia and New Zealand millionaires know where to go for a fine dining experience. The majority of billionaires congregate in Auckland, which as of January 2021, boasts three Mitchell starred restaurants. The Grove Restaurant, which is helmed by Mitlin starred chef Mark, offers the best value for money. Sorio requires months of notice for bookings, and meals range from $85 to $120, which is a bargain when compared to other Mitlin starred restaurants. Siddharth, led by Sid Sarawak, is another popular eatery among millionaires. This Indian-themed eatery also offers wine pairings to complement your meal for the ultimate cultural and traditional experience. At the French Café, he also runs the restaurant. This Michelin starred chef knows his way around the restaurant, which serves a four-course meal with plenty of options for guests. Clearly, billionaires in New Zealand are still in the early stages of seeing their country become more catered to the ultra-rich. Queenstown Hill is one of the most pricey areas in the city. New Zealand multi-billion estates. There is a $14 million estate known as Y Unit Estate. However, in 2013, that wasn't the most costly city to live in. A residence in Auckland, Siraki, and central Auckland sold for more than $27 million to an undisclosed bidder, while a penthouse on the 53rd and 54th floors of Pacific Tower is on the market for about $30 million. The Bay of Islands is another affluent enclave, with mansions costing upwards of $10 million. Even yet, those residences aren't for sale to the general public. Instead, owners and real estate agents have access to a private buyer's list. Conclusion Let's wrap up this video with a discussion on the wealthy elite's future generations. The Yacht Club, for example, is a social elite club for wealthy young New Zealanders. In fact, the Prime Minister of New Zealand's son, Max Key, is a member who sees privileged kids enjoying helicopters, fashionable clothes, excellent eating, and special memberships to the most elite social circles. While many of these children are born into wealthy families, many are beginning to build their own fortunes by leveraging their parents' connections. Unfortunately, these well-heeled children are rarely exposed to lower-class environments and lack political understanding. In addition, they participate in less community activities. To put it another way, they're not going to leave their privileged enclave. However, it's worth noting that there is a new generation of wealthy Kiwis who are not from a wealthy family. Maybe those wealthy children will make a difference. What's interesting about New Zealand's wealthy is that they have around $93 billion in trust funds, which is nearly 70 times more than the typical Kiwi would like to have. So what do you think of New Zealand as a country? This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Remember to comment and share the video and leave your comments down below in the comment section. Also, Watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.